now we're going to switch it up. We're going to look at now some of the things that we can do to support ourselves. So the first thing we're looking at is self-esteem. Okay? And self-esteem, in a nutshell, is an emotional evaluation or opinion of your self-worth and personal value. And I think this kind of really sums it up quite, quite um, well. So how, what is the emotional evaluation that you have about yourself? That determines your self-esteem, how much you esteem yourself, how much you value and look at yourself. And it's your opinion of your own self-worth or personal value. And so self-esteem is so important because how you see you determines how other people see you. Because the world is looking to you to see an example of how they should treat you and they will follow your lead. And so how you see yourself and how you project yourself and how you carry yourself sends a message to everyone around you. And so it's so important that we are able to value ourselves and see ourselves. And, and you know, there's lots of things that come up in life that knock our confidence and how we see ourselves and how we feel about things. But it's really important that we are able to see ourselves in a positive light because no one else has to, but it's all of our own God-given right to do that for ourselves. I always say to people, self-care can be seen in three simple ways. The way we think about ourselves, the way we talk about ourselves and the way we treat ourselves. That shows your true self-care for yourself. I don't care what people are saying and talking about. If they're not doing those three, you cannot say you truly love yourself to the best of your ability. So how you think about yourself, how you talk about yourself, and how you treat yourself shows your self-love your self and your self-care. So <clears throat> this picture speaks volumes because on the right, is the individual at a time where they have self-esteem and the picture on the left is an individual at the time when they don't and you can just see the difference the picture speaks for itself look at the body language look you know and what's coming out of the head is an expression of what's going on inside where the mind goes the energy flows and we've all had experiences in our lives where we felt like the person on the left and when we felt like the person on the right and so when we have positive self-esteem, we're more likely to think and feel positive emotions about life. And this means that we are able to deal with life's ups and downs because we're positive, we're upbeat, we're looking at it from a mindset of gratitude. We understand that, you know, we have ups and downs, highs and lows, good times and bad times. Because we have high self-esteem, we're able to cope and manage. Now, the interesting thing is that low self-esteem is also an emotional evaluation or opinion of your self-worth or personal value. It's just that you hold it much lower. And so whether someone has high self-esteem or low self-esteem, it's ultimately how you see yourself. Now, whether the life scripts that you have experienced in life from parents, from family, from friends, from colleagues, from people, you know, um, that have told you certain things and you have internalized that about yourself. It's what you have taken on board. You see, no one has the power to make you feel inferior without your consent. And so what we have to do is we have to stop allowing people to rent free spaces in our head as the landlord of your own mind, you need to throw those people out with all of their thoughts and their feelings and the things that they've said, because that's not who you are. And so what happens is when we are holding on to that thing that someone has said about us, to that thing that someone did about us, and we value ourselves based on those interactions, that is when we have low self-esteem. But maybe someone just didn't have the ability to treat you the way you should have been treated. 
And just maybe that person who said that thing about you was saying it to be malicious because they saw the greatness in you. And so it's really important that we recognize and understand those things. As I said at the beginning, what are the things that you need to leave behind as you come into 2021? People and things. <clears throat> and so with self-esteem or with lower self-esteem, we tend to see ourselves in a more negative or, or critical way. So understandably, we might find it more difficult to overcome day-to-day -day challenges. You see, when we have high self-esteem, something happens. We go, hey, hey, it's life. Okay, let's keep it moving. When we have low self-esteem, it's like, why me? This is always me. No one else goes through this. And so self-esteem plays an important role in motivation and success within all aspects of life. And so it's really key. It's really important. It's very rare that you find someone with very low self-esteem that is very motivated and having success in multiple areas of their life. And so it's really important that we learn to manage and deal with the worry and that we look at things from a mindset of, you know, uh, the circle of influence rather than the circle of concern. And we're going to use some of the tools that I'm going to be talking about as we're going through. It's very key, very important. So what we're going to do now is I'm going to split you into breakout groups again. And I want you to have a discussion around, regarding self-esteem. So what does it mean to you? And what contributes to someone having high or low self-esteem? So there is lots of things that we can do to help boost our, our, our self-esteem. And, you know, for, for many people, especially in this time, it's like there, there is a sense of feeling helpless, you know. And, you know, so these are just some of the things. So, like, social connection is so important. And I know we can't do it in the, the way that we'd normally like to because of the restrictions. but even even this what we're doing now is a social connection you know and i think it's really powerful and it's really important that we are connecting with one another that we are talking to one another because when one is down the other one can lift them up and it's really important that we do stay connected i remember um i was doing some research and i was looking about the importance of connection and there was a study that was done it was about, it was, I think it was about 24, 29 different studies, over 124,000 people. And they did these, they did a, um, a whole different range of studies looking at different demographics and looking at different factors to what um, contributes to well-being and longer life. And when they looked at all of these studies, over 124,000 people, the one common denominator that determined how long people will live and the healthiness of what someone would live it wasn't whether they smoked or not. It wasn't whether they exercised or not. It wasn't if they were poor or wealthy. It was their social connection. And that doesn't mean to say that the other things ain't important. But the, 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 the dominant factor was that if people had social connections, and it wasn't about the quantity, but it was about the quality. Can I talk to that person if I'm really feeling low? Can I call upon that person in that hour of need? That was the number one predominating factor to people's long-term well-being. So social connection is so important. And then we have um, exercise. So exercise is really good for us both mentally and physically. Yeah, because when we exercise, it releases endorphins. Endorphins are our natural painkillers and they help us to feel good. But it's also the fact that you've done something worthwhile. You've done something that makes you feel valued. You've achieved something. Because remember, action, uh, mood follows action. So it's when we are doing stuff that it helps us to feel good about ourselves. And then self-care, which I spoke about earlier, very important. You see, if you see yourself in the right way, then it doesn't really matter so much what other people think. As the African proverb says, when the enemy within is conquered, the enemy without can do us no harm. 
When you are confident in yourself and you believe in yourself, it doesn't matter if someone else doesn't believe in you. And to be honest with you, if you have a vision for your life, it's no one else's responsibility to believe in you because it's your vision and it's your vision. So that's why people can't see it. And when we don't have the right self-esteem, we are looking for other people to validate us when the only person you should be looking to is you because it's your vision. Then we have gratitude. Gratitude is, a, is like an inner beacon that creates internal direction and motivation for us. When we have gratitude, our life, the lens that we look through is a completely different lens from when we don't have it. It enables us to see the blessings in the things we have in spite of the things we don't have. It enables us to focus on the positive rather than the negative in the situation. Gratitude is so important. It's an attitude. And without it, it's like a flat tire. You can go nowhere. And the more gratitude we have is the better that we can see ourselves and we can see life experiences that we are going through. Then we have med meditation and um, so medication and uh, alternative uh, therapy. So again, these are things that we can do to help us to calm ourselves, to help us to relax and to help us to feel good about ourselves. Mindfulness and journaling are so important. Mindfulness is about helping us to be present in the moment. And journaling, again, is a great way of expressing ourselves and being mindful of the things that has happened, the things that we've done well. You know, so that's a great, a great way. One of the things that I personally do is um, I journal every night. So I will record at least one sometimes two or three significant things that I've done in the day to either better myself, better someone else, or better my family. But it's important that we write those things down because how many of you find it hard to remember the things you've done wrong? You don't, do you? You, you can remember it quite easy. You can talk about it in great detail. But the things we do well, we forget about. So it's important for you to write those things down. Write down your trophies. So that in those times where your self-esteem is a bit low, you can look at that and remind yourself of who you are. Don't put your power in someone else's hand that unless that person tells you you don't feel good about yourself. Put the power in your own hand. Write it down so when you need it, you can fill yourself up. Your journal is your petrol tank that you can go to and fill up your motivation as you remind yourself of how great you are. And then we have coaching. Coaching is a great way um, to help people to find the true potential within themselves. So I do coaching, I do one-to-one -one coaching. I'll talk a bit about that at the end. And it's, I find it amazing how literally you can, it's like watering a seed when you're coaching and you just see it blossom. And as people come into their own oneness, into enlightenment of who they truly are and their potential, it's a powerful thing. But coaching is a great tool also. So <clears throat> it's so important that you believe in yourself, but in order to do that, you have to be you. And one of the things I always say to people is you were born an original. Do not die a copy. Stop trying to follow other people because everyone else is taken. Shine in your light. Show the world who you are. Let your gifts shine. And that's when you will see the true potential. Because if you are living your life to please other people, you're a liar. You're living for them and not for yourself. And then the true people who would value you for who you are, you're never allowing them to see you. So never allow someone else to dictate to you how you should be. If someone doesn't like you for being you, they're not meant to be in your life. Don't hold on to something that you should have let go of. It's so important. So there's four things that we want to look at here. And the first thing in terms of your self-esteem is that we have to be realistic. <clears throat> so making small changes to improving your self-esteem is going to take time, patience and effort. I'm not expecting after this webinar for you to just be completely transformed and nothing's not bothering you anymore. But it's about small steps. It's about taking your time. You know, it's about <clears throat> doing what works for you. It's about trying new things. It's about speaking up for yourself a bit more in every situation. It's about letting go of those things that you need to let go of. 
It's about recognizing when that relationship is not serving you, but it's afflicting you and making the decision to walk away from those people and those places and those situations that are actually affecting your life. And, and one of the things that I often say to people is that success is a daily ritual that happens with every situation when you do things from a value-based perspective rather than a pleasing people's perspective. And it's so important that when you violate your own values, you create a war inside that you can never heal. And so if someone doesn't like you for standing by your values, there's someone that's not meant to be in your life. So we have to be realistic. The second thing, <clears throat> my finger will come up, is the inner critic. Now, those of you who've been to a few of my webinars, you know exactly where I'm going with this. The rats, the reoccurring afflicted thoughts that come in our minds and they cause havoc, eating away at our self-esteem, our self-confidence and our self-belief. And so when we notice unhelpful thoughts, such as comparing yourself unfavorably to others. Because what we do when we compare to others, we look at someone else who is at chapter 19 in a particular area of their life where we may be in chapter two and we're thinking we can never be like them. Not knowing that when you get to chapter 19, you'll be excelling that individual. So we have to challenge the rats the reoccurring afflicted thoughts. Remember the 60 to 70,000 thoughts, 90% of those rumination. They come fast and thick, consuming at the back of our minds. Don't do that. Don't speak up. Don't try it. Don't go for that promotion. Don't let them know how you feel. Don't cry. They're going to laugh at you. All of these things that are going on in our mind. All of these things that evoke the worries. All of these things that erode our self-esteem. Don't believe everything you think. Don't believe everything you think. Because our thoughts are just like birds. We can't stop them from flying over our heads, but we can stop them from nesting there. Don't allow those negative thoughts to rest and nest and breed in your mind. The inner critic. And the next thing is about positive self-talk. <clears throat> so we have to use affirmations and positive coping strategies and statements daily. Yeah, so I just spoke about the rats. Well, we need to use our cats, our counteractive affirmative thoughts to eat those rats. And it's only, because remember, if you don't put something else to place it there, the negative thoughts will be there. Remember, your mind is a garden and you do not need to plant anything for weeds to grow. The inner critic is the weeds in your mind. The positive self-talk is the, is the um, flowers that you choose to plant. The thoughts of peace, the thoughts of joy, the thoughts of saying how great you are, the thoughts that of encouraging yourself. You have to do that with intention. Speak them into being. And be really powerful over time. Whatever you practice, you become good at. The reason why we're so good at criticizing ourselves is because we practice it all the time. And the final thing is acceptance. So remember that you are one of a kind. There's no one else like you. There's no one else that can do what you can do. And you know what? If you don't fulfill what you was born to do, the world is going to miss out on the gems that only you could provide. Your uniqueness should be treasured. I lived a long time out of my, out of my gift and my passion. That's why when I do it now, I do it with zeal. Because I knew how much I wasted time. Exercise self-compassion and always love you. And know that no one else can do and bring to pass what you are born to do and bring to pass in your life. And once you accept that, you will set the world on fire. Once you accept that, you will realize how insignificant someone else's opinion is of you. We are all divine beings in our own right. Manifest your greatness. Manifest your greatness. You see, it's not who you are.
that holds you back. It's who you think you're not. It's the limitations you put on yourself. It's the stumbling blocks you put in your own way. It's the way you trip yourself up by your own negative thoughts. We create the biggest stumbling blocks in our life by how we think about ourselves. And probably in an area where you see yourself that way, there's someone else telling you you're much better than that. But we refuse to accept it. And it's who you think you're not that's holding you back. It's where you think you can't do public speaking that's holding you back. It's where you feel you're not strong enough that's holding you back. Because whether you think you can or you can't, you are right. Mm -hmm.